Music, like all other art forms, does not exist in a vacuum. It is not experienced on its own. It is experienced in relation to other things, to who we are, to our thoughts and feelings and the world around us. This is why it's such a subjective medium. This is why I know the soundtracks to my favourite games back to front. This is why I cannot listen to Icona Pops and Charlie XEX's I Don't Care. This is why Phoebe Bridges Live made me feel nothing. And yet thank you for the music by ABBA gets me every time. Music is about association. It's about the connections that we make with the world around us. And in understanding this issue, we can also begin to understand why it is that music, above all other things, is so easy to remember, and how it is that we can use this to our advantage, and in general, to understand more about how we experience music. Now the power of music and association can be most readily apparent in the form of a soundtrack, wherein music is used in conjunction with a visual medium often to create further emotional depth. This is why we can hear something like this, and immediately associate it with a young Daniel Radcliffe. For those unaware, this is what we call a leitmotif a term that was popularised by German composer Richard Wagner and most famously used in many of his early operas, such as The Ring Cycle. It generally involves a short and recognisable melodic phrase that comes to represent and be correlated with a certain theme, character, object or idea. Take um, this, for example. An otherwise unseeming statue of an owl, nothing much, but Keen-eared viewers will notice that when this was introduced, a certain melodic phrase was played. Now, leitmotifs are a very powerful tool in this sense for multiple reasons. First of all, something that is otherwise insignificant or unimportant takes up much more space in our minds when it is associated with something else. In this case, a short, easily recognisable and recountable melody. Now, we'll come back to this idea in a moment. Secondly, with this new association formed, neither the subject nor the motif associated can exist without the other. This means that if this object were to be introduced again without the use of the motif, this would change our understanding of it and be quite off-putting. But what I find to be more interesting is that if we were to hear the motif played again without the presence of the object, suddenly the object comes back into our mind without even having to see it. Now this is an incredibly powerful tool when it comes to storytelling. But you want to know what else it's really good for? Making money! We've all suffered at the hands of the earworm. A deadly creature that seems quite harmless and perhaps even amicable at first but with short time can turn into a deadly parasite that'll ruin the better half of your day if you're lucky. Now these worms come in all shapes and sizes. The chorus to a popular song you've been trying to avoid wherever you go, the theme song to a television series that you've been catching up on for weeks, but the worst offender of them all is the commercial jingle. You only need to bear witness to one or two advertisements featuring a nice catchy tune, sometimes an entire song, sometimes a single phrase, and before you know it, you're humming it on the tram and you don't even realize. You don't even have to like it. What matters is that you remember it, and before you know it, you're on the commute to work and all you can think about is Katy Perry singing about cheese, and the marketing cycle continues. Studies have shown that roughly 90% of people experience earworms at least once a week, and one third of people once a day. And even I think that this is a low statistic. Now music above visual mediums such as film and design is particularly good at causing such a phenomenon, because it is largely built upon repeated rhythmic and melodic ideas. Our brains are hardwired to seek and recognize patterns in the world around us, so it only makes sense that music would be the first suspect. Given its roots in ceremony and dance, a lot of music is specifically tailored towards this neurological habit, allowing just about anybody to participate in the shared music experience. 
But we're forgetting one key detail here. Music is experienced not only in relation to the world around us, but also to our own personal experiences. No matter its emotional depth, or lack thereof, your experience listening to a piece of music can and will define your relationship with it from then on. For many people, music acts as an unconscious undertone to our daily lives, a sort of soundtrack to some of our most significant moments. Dr. Kelly Jakubowski argues that Music is inherently bound up with personal identity, and so when people can identify pieces of music without a lot of information, it's often music from their youth which can trigger what we call the reminiscence bump in autobiographical memory. It can bring back your memories from that time period when you were having these self-defining experiences. Sorry about the silly voice there, Kelly. But this reminiscence bump describes the effect of nostalgia, another key feature in forming one's relationship with a piece of music. Kelly proposes that Older adults have a really good memory for certain songs from their youth because they listened to that same record over and over. Effectively, this means that music is such a strong driver of nostalgia simply because it is such a consistent underlying aspect of our lives. It explains why The Cat Empire still stands as one of my favourite bands to this day because it is all that my parents would play to me when I was growing up, or that so many ABBA songs hold such a bittersweet place in my heart because they remind me of the school production of Mamma Mia that got cancelled because we had to go into a statewide lockdown. And remember what I said about motifs earlier. When associated with a certain piece of music, our memories become even stronger. This is why music therapy is such a powerful tool against conditions like dementia, because having that association allows us to bring ourselves back to a time that we could have otherwise forgotten. The subject is made more significant by the motif. Ultimately, we can conclude that the simplest explanation for music being so easy to recognize and remember is the fact that it takes up so much of our lives. Studies done by the International Federation of the Phonographic Industry found that in 2022, the average person listened to 20.1 hours of music every week, a number that has only risen from 18.4 in 2021 and a solid 18 in 2019. Whether consciously or not, we experience music on a daily basis and our brain gets all excited when it can recognize these musical patterns. We shape our musical experience as can it shape us. And ultimately, we all experience music in a different way because we're all different. It's obvious, but it's true. And I think that's quite beautiful. Except when it's a KFC ad. Oh my god, it's the laziest advertising ever. It's just, whoa, this is an awkward and relatable scenario. What are we gonna do? Ruined a perfectly good song for me. Charlie XCX and I kind of pop. God, down the drain because of KFC just wanted some money and couldn't come up with an original scenario to anything. Oh my god.